I know what you're thinking. Should I upgrade from my 100S to the GFX 100, the second? Now they're calling it the second. It's complicated. So I'll break it down to two things. If you are a studio photographer that mainly shoots portraits, really slow moving things in a controlled environment, and you don't do much video work, no. That's the simple answer, the 100S, which is what I shoot most of my stuff with at the moment, is a very, very capable camera. And you shouldn't upgrade because it's not worth the money due to all the prices going down on the 100S now. You know, GFX, the second is gonna be somewhere in the vicinity of, I think I saw the retail price around 12,000, 13,000 Australian dollars where I am. So that's a lot for a body, that's a big step up. But Let's dig a little bit deeper into the use cases that I think you should definitely consider it. Okay, scenario one, what I like to call the hobbyist. You're not actually a working professional, but you love gear, you have a bit of gas, which is the uh, gear acquisition syndrome. You love new tech, you love everything, and you like to treat yourself to nice things. You know, you work hard, you play hard. It's a hard one because I genuinely think this is a great tool, but at the same time, if you're not a professional, you can get just as much fun out of a Canon R5 or a Fujifilm X-H2 or 2S than you would with this camera. So my initial thoughts is keeping the shortest suite. If you're the hobbyist, unless you have oodles of money, this camera is not worth it. Next up, we have the full frame gang. Uh, we have the Canon R5 guys, the Sony a7 IV, a7R5 kind of, you know, A1 guys, and they're thinking about dipping their toe in the medium format pool. Let me tell you, the pool is very nice to be in. But from my own personal experience, I would say it depends what your motivation is. So if you're chasing image quality, those kind of things, look, it's not gonna be a crazy step up. It's gonna be noticeable. I definitely notice uh, when I moved from the R5, there was just certain things. The color science is much better in my eyes. The dynamic range is definitely a lot better. And seeing the new files from the new, the GFX, the second, it actually is a big difference for even the 100S. But I still don't know. It depends what you're getting paid to do. And some of us get paid to do a varied type of work. I do fashion, I do commercial. And for me personally, I need a really versatile camera, but I don't need a camera that performs really, really well in low light situations. And I don't need a camera that shoots really, really fast. I'm not doing sports. I'm not doing things where I'm tracking people aggressively. The fashion shoots, the worst thing I'm doing is, you know, models are running along the beach or something like that towards me. So there's a couple of specific use cases, but all in all, I get away with using my 100S the same as what I would with the R5 and I didn't really notice a penalty. So as always, your mileage may vary, but that's something, you know, it, it really depends what you're looking for but I'll expand more on that in my next little thing as well. Just uh, bear with me while I shift locations inside the warehouse because I can. Should we go there? I don't know. I don't know where to go. It's confusing. The last group I'd like to address is probably where I fit and the argument is pretty strong to seriously consider changing. So I consider myself a hybrid shooter, but in the true sense. So most of the time, if I'm shooting stills, I want the best quality stills, and hence why I shoot with a 100S. I have a Fuji X-H2 as a backup if I need to shoot in those faster scenarios because the autofocus is better on the X-H2. So I found myself with a few different cameras, and so for the video side, I shoot, as I previously mentioned in my other videos, I currently use RED. But with the GFX 100, the second, the argument gets a bit confusing because now we have a camera that can produce really high quality video with fairly good rolling shutter performance, 
that I don't need to switch bodies for. So at the moment, if I'm shooting a fashion campaign, I'm shooting all the images on my 100S, then I'm switching cameras to my RED, which takes a while to boot up. Uh, you know, I have to run different lenses, different storage, different battery power, I have to use VLOX. So there's a lot of gear that I have to take to a shoot if I'm doing photo and video. With the release of the 100 the second, all of a sudden I have very, very high quality video capabilities built into the camera and the ability to switch from video to stills and back again very, very quickly. So the argument for having one camera for multiple things is a lot higher because for me, especially when I'm shooting fashion, from shooting stills and walking around the model to being able to shoot to you know, to switch the mode straight to video and then continue working in the same way I was. There's no change, there's no time lost. That's a huge time saving, not only on set, but in the post-production, I have the same workflow, I'm working with the same color science. There's, there's a lot to be said about it. So I didn't want this video to be some crazy long technical, you know, showdown of what the, you know, like you could look into the minutia about the cameras and look, there are differences. There are big differences. I could list off all the things, but I already did uh, my top favorite features of the new camera. And I think they are a good reason that someone like myself would actually move across to the new body. So I know I have pre-ordered the, the camera. I'll be spending the money, especially on the new lens, because I think it gives a new perspective that a full frame lens of the same focal length cannot give. So it's a bit of a unicorn lens. And I think it's really important that you use gear that motivates you and inspires you to create things. And for me, Fujifilm has been that for a while. I love the color science. I love the new Riala Ace film simulation. And I love picking up the camera and creating things. And it's very easy for me to create YouTube content with the X-H2 because I can just run around with it and it's great. And it gives me really confidence gives me really confidence. It gives me a lot of confidence that I'm gonna produce a really nice image. It's not the best in the world. It's not a red or an Ari, but it's still really good. And I could film on it, aside from the stigma of not having a cinema camera, I could get fantastic results on this for a commercial job. But bringing GFX into the equation with the cage and fully kitted out and all of a sudden, it's a really, really compelling argument. So I hope you got something from that. For me personally, I will be upgrading. And I think that if you are doing really slow moving things, the differences aren't gonna be worth upgrading. It's not worth the extra money. You're probably gonna lose 5,000 or so, depending what your currency, where you are in change, in the changeover. And that's a lot of money. That That's a different body for people. But for me, I'll be consolidating potentially all my cinema camera bodies and gear or my red gear into a couple of GFX bodies and then I have a couple of hybrid uh, backup bodies and whatever that produce a really really beautiful image so let me know your thoughts if you think I'm wrong let me know what you're intending to do are you have you pre-ordered are you on the fence would you like to know anything more I'm going to have the camera in a couple of days again to actually do a launch event for Fujifilm and Camera Pro, but I would like to test new things. So if you have uh, specific things, I know a subscriber asked about I only autofocus, so I'll be testing that, but I look forward to doing some, maybe some GFX 100 the second versus red, see what the dynamic range difference is, what the image quality is. Uh, you know, let me know if you're interested in that or not, but I appreciate all of you guys who have subscribed. We've grown this channel really, really quickly. I've started from nothing. And just to see your guys' engagement on the content, um, it just is really awesome to see. And I really enjoy doing this and making this stuff. So let me know and I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks, guys.